predict the structure of the molecule with the formula C10H14O. The first thing we will need to do is to calculate the degrees of unsaturation. The formula for degrees of unsaturation is number of carbons times 2 plus 2 minus the number of hydrogens over 2. Oxygen is not counted in the formula and if we have halogens then a halogen is counted as one hydrogen and a nitrogen is counted as half a carbon but we don't have to worry about that because our formula has only carbons, hydrogens and oxygens. Back to our formula we have 10 carbons 10 times 2 plus 2 minus 14 hydrogens over 2 and that gives us uh, 4 degrees of unsaturation. If we have 4 degrees of unsaturation, there is a very high chance that we have a benzene ring. Every degree of unsaturation is either a ring or a double bond. So a benzene ring has 3 double bonds and 1 ring, which is 4 degrees of unsaturation. So if you have 4 or more degrees of unsaturation, there is a high chance that there is a benzene ring and we can prove it a little later on. After we write down our degrees of unsaturation, we will write out our HNMR chart, looking at every signal. The first signal, I'm going to call it A, is 9 hydrogen. It looks like one peak. One peak is called a singlet and it's around 1.4 ppm. Second peak, I see one hydrogen, and also it's a singlet around 5 ppm. Then I see two hydrogen, doublet, looks like two peaks, around 6.9 ppm. And the last one I see is two hydrogen tablet around 7.4 ppm. Once I have written everything down, I can start drawing my structure. First of all, do I have a benzene ring? Well, if we look at these somewhat funky um, hydrogens here, we can see, and then we look at our PPM chart, we can see that hydrogens on the benzene ring must have 6.5 to 8 PPM shift. Now here we have 2 hydrogen 6.9, 2 hydrogen 7.4. So yes, these are the hydrogens on the benzene ring because they follow the PPM. And therefore, and we have four degrees of unsaturation, so we must have a benzene ring, and that's what I will start with. If I know I have a benzene ring, I will start by drawing one. I also know that I have two hydrogens and another two hydrogens on the benzene ring. So what I will do is I will show two hydrogens on one side, and then I will also show two hydrogens opposite of them. Um, and my molecule will be symmetrical. That's how we get two and two on the benzene ring. If I would have five or three and one, that's how I would show it two and two. I'm going to show it um, one pair opposite the other. Next, I know that I have something connected here and something will be connected here. So I will proceed to nine hydrogen singlet. How could I have so many hydrogens singlet? And what does singlet mean? Well, the rule is n plus 1, where n is the number of neighboring hydrogens. Neighboring hydrogens. So if I have zero neighboring hydrogens, let me rewrite that a little bit. Let's, let's, let me do num number of hydrogens neighboring and then n plus 1. So if I have 0, then 0 plus 1 gives me 1, which is a singlet. So if I have 0 neighboring hydrogens, then I will be a singlet. If 
I have one neighboring hydrogen, one plus one is equal to, I'm going to be doublet. Two neighboring hydrogens, two plus one is a three triplet, and so on. You can look at your textbook to see what the rest of them are. Triplet, quartet, and so on. Okay, nine hydrogen singlet. Singlet means I have zero neighboring hydrogen. How could I have zero neighboring hydrogens and have so many hydrogens with no neighboring hydrogens next to them? Well, one possibility is a third butyl group. Let's take a look at this group. So here I have three methyl groups all connected to one carbon. So they will give me the same signal because they're all connected to the same carbon. They have nine hydrogens, so I have nine hydrogens. And on the neighboring carbon, I have no hydrogens, which means this will be indeed a nine hydrogen singlet. Okay, now we only have one little part left. Let's see how many carbons we use. We have six carbons on the benzene ring and four carbons from our third butyl group. That's 10. If you look at our formula, here we have C10, H14O. So we already used all the carbons. We have no carbons left. So the only thing, we do have an oxygen left, and we also have this one hydrogen singlet left. So what could it be? Well, this could be OH. We have one hydrogen left and one oxygen left. The hydrogen on the oxygen is a singlet. My chart does not show it, so you can maybe find better charts, but this will be around 5 ppm. Uh, we don't really need to care that much about it anyway, because we're out of carbons. We have only one place that our benzene needs a connection to, and we have an oxygen left. So this must be the OH group. So this must be my uh, structure. This is Maya from Transformation Tutoring. I hope you enjoyed this HNMR tutorial and I look forward to seeing you more in my chemistry videos.